everyone. Today's start STEM lesson is going to be about the life cycle of a jellyfish. My name is Melissa and I'm a student at UFT. I study biology, psychology, and anthropology. I love to do puzzles and I love to read. Hey everyone, my name is Paulna and I'm also a student at UFT. I study human biology and psychology and I love to bake and travel. So on today's agenda, we have the life cycle of a jellyfish, which includes topics like what are jellyfish and their life cycle. And we're also going to be doing an activity where we create a poster. So what exactly are jellyfish? Do you know what a jellyfish is? Have you ever seen one in real life? I have. I've seen one at Ripley's Aquarium here in Toronto. This is a clip of just what one type of jellyfish looks like. They come in many different shapes, sizes, and colors, and are found all over the world. Now, before we dive into the life cycle of a jellyfish, let's look at what a jellyfish actually is. A jellyfish is an animal, but despite their name, it's not actually a fish. Unlike fish, they have no gills, but instead they absorb oxygen through their skin. Jellyfish are actually a part of the animal group called cnidarians. Jellyfish are also invertebrates because they don't have backbones. They also don't have organs and are made up of 95% water. Jellyfish can live in both fresh water and salt water because they, need, they tend to follow the currents of the ocean. There are 200 species of jellyfish out there, and although there are so many different types of jellyfish, they all share the same basic life cycle. This picture shows just some of the different jellyfish that exist. Now we'll start with the life cycle of a jellyfish. An adult jellyfish is called a medusa. It has an umbrella shape and it can move around the ocean freely by squeezing its body and pushing forward. A medusa pretty much eats anything it runs into, like small plants and small fish, even fish eggs. A medusa can also live in surface waters or in deep sea. On the right are some diagrams and a real life image of what a medusa looks like. As you can see, it has an umbrella shape at the top and leg-like shapes coming up from the bottom. When a female jellyfish and a male jellyfish come together, they can form a baby. The baby that forms is called a planula. The planula looks like a little flat egg with little hairs called cilia. Cilia is what helps it float around. The planula doesn't eat because it only floats around for a few days before it continues on to the next part of its life cycle. It also just floats in deep sea near the ocean floor in preparation for the next part of its life cycle. On the right is a diagram and a real life image of what a planula looks like. You can see that it's an oval shape with small hairs around it. After a few days, the planula will attach to a firm surface on the ocean floor where it can't move and it will turn into a polyp. A polyp looks like a cylindrical flower that has a mouth and tentacles. Because it's attached to a surface, it can't move. They feed on zooplankton, which are small animals that drift in oceans and freshwater bodies. The polyp then turns into a budding polyp, where it will either divide to produce a new polyp or it will produce an ephera, which is a young, immature jellyfish. As you can see in the diagram and image, it looks just like a polyp, which we looked at on the previous slide, but it has more layers and more tentacles. And just like the polyp, it also can't move because it's attached to a surface. The polyp also eats zooplankton and sits on the ocean floor. A budding polyp will turn into an ephyra. An ephyra looks like a starfish or a flower. Just like a medusa, which is a mature adult jellyfish, an ephyra can move around freely. It eats small plants and small fish, and it lives in surface waters or in the deep sea. When an ephyra matures, it turns into a medusa.
Now, it's important to note that as you can see in the image, the life cycle of a jellyfish occurs in a cycle that repeats itself. The events in a cycle repeat continuously in the same order. Now let's review what you've just learned with some questions. How could you explain the life cycle of a jellyfish to a family member or friend? What family of animals do jellyfish belong to? You can take some time to answer the question, but if you need more time, you can pause the video here. All right, let's take what we've learned about the life cycle of a jellyfish and apply it to create a poster to spread awareness. It's important to protect jellyfish and their habitats to support their life cycle. But our human actions are affecting the environment of jellyfish, causing them to spread to areas where they don't normally live. Jellyfish moving to new locations can be a problem because sometimes if they get into waters that are too close to land, like the beaches we go to, we get stung and hurt by them. They can also cause buildings to lose electricity when they clog power systems that give us electricity in some areas. So it's important to spread awareness about this and to spread the word and educate as many people as we can about this issue. Now let's look at the materials and safety for creating a poster. There are many ways to create a poster, but here are some ways that we suggest. You'll need one sheet of paper and some writing materials like markers, pens, or crayons, or you can use a computer to use Microsoft Word or Google Documents. But again, there are many other ways to create a poster by hand or on a computer. These are just two ways that we suggest. For safety, if you'd like to use tools like scissors or a stapler, please have an adult help you to avoid injury. All right. You're going to pick one way that human actions help spread jellyfish where they don't normally live. The first action is that as oceans get warmer, it becomes more suitable for marine animals to spread into those areas that had previously been too cold. The second action is that with no predators around to keep the jellyfish population in control, their population increases due to overfishing. The last action is that structures that we build like water, like in water like piers, oil platforms, and artificial reefs give jellyfish an extra habitat where they can live. You can take some time to choose your topic, but you can also pause the video to revisit the ideas and pick any one of these actions to talk about on your poster. Your poster should communicate one of your chosen human actions one reason why this matters, and one way to help stop the spread of jellyfish. Here's an example of a poster we created in Microsoft Word. We made sure to include a human action, a reason why this matters, and a way to help stop the spread of jellyfish. Some strategies that helped us make our poster eye catch and included using big, bold fonts that were easy to read. We also used bright colors, more pictures, less words, and avoid crowding, which is when pictures and words are too close together. Now that we're done the lesson, let's reflect. What have you learned from this activity? Why is social awareness important? What are some new concepts that you haven't heard about before? You can take some time to think about this or you can pause the video if you need more time. All right, let's recap what we've learned today. There are hundreds of different jellyfish in the world that come in different shapes, sizes, and colors. The life, the life of a jellyfish occurs in a cycle that repeats itself. Our human actions have an impact on the habitats of jellyfish, including global warming, overfishing, and coastal development. All right, so that's it for today. We hope you enjoyed the lesson as much as we enjoyed presenting it. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. You can contact us through the email on the screen or visit our website. Bye, everyone.